All right, guys, so I have a treat for you today. We're gonna do another motor vlog, and I wanna show you what I consider to be one of the most scenic drives in all of Colorado, and it's right out of Denver. If you live in Denver, Colorado, let me tell you, this is one of the best. This is absolutely breathtaking. So we're actually here on Deer Creek Canyon Road, which is actually the back way to my house up in the mountains. We're going to start by this, I don't know, what do you call it, a power distribution plant, <laughs> which is not very scenic. But let me tell you, this is probably the best. Let me tell you, if you're in Colorado, you definitely need to go on this road if you have a motorcycle. And not only is it beautiful, just absolutely beautiful, there is a lot of twists and turns. Let me tell you, these twists and turns will challenge even the most experienced rider. <laughs> Let me tell you, you definitely have to take these turns at like 20 miles per hour or slower. You could actually probably go down in first gear in some of these. This is kind of a blind curve right here. See if I can kind of jump on this. <laughs> Oh, look at that. There's like motorcycles right behind me. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right, so this is a pretty awesome drive. And the funny thing is, is not a lot of people really know about it. It seems like there's not a lot of traffic. So I kind of went a little bit further off of the beaten path so we could kind of come up onto it. And the first thing you kind of come up to is these red rock formations, which is pretty awesome. So this is, look at how green it is. I've never seen so much rain here in, uh, on, the, on the front range of Colorado. Everything is absolutely super green. I wish I had some land to run my cows so they could eat some of this grass. It's usually not this green. <laughs> then they have all these signs, 30 mile per hour curves. You have to really watch these curves. So it'll be kind of interesting with some bikers behind me to see how this turns out if they pass me or not. <laughs> oh, they actually pulled off. Looked like they were sport bikes. So take a look at all the, the formations up there, all the rocks. So take a look at this. This is kind of where it opens up right here. It's really beautiful. This is the South Valley Park. Pretty awesome. So these curves can definitely sneak up on you, that's for sure. And the funny thing is, is uh, <laughs> I had my GPS on to get down here and the GPS is still trying to give me directions. I actually have a Bluetooth uh, headset. Uh, it's like little earbuds that I have in and it's still trying to give me directions to Denver. <laughs> so I just turned it down on my phone. So we actually start down here going pretty fast, not too fast. Uh, I think the speed limit is like 35 through here. And you'll see a lot of people taking pictures, a lot of people riding bikes, a lot of people just kind of hanging out, doing stuff on this road. But let me tell you, I'm not the best when it comes to corners. I could not keep up with like sport bikes or something like that. Especially around some of these really super sharp corners. It's pretty amazing how sharp some of these corners are. So the funny thing is, is going back the other way, you can see the, the red rock formations a lot better. It almost seems like we missed them going this way, which is pretty interesting. 
But once you get up in here, you like drive through a really deep canyon. Look at how tall the sides are. And then 20 miles an hour on this one. So it can get a little bit challenging up through here. I think I'm in like second gear. Maybe I'm in first gear, I don't know. No, this is third gear. You almost have to be in second gear for these corners though. And my bike really rumbles <laughs> around these corners. Trying to figure out what gear to be in. But look at how beautiful it is, just really. Everything's so green too. I've never seen green on the side like that. Where even the, the side of the rock is, has green grass grown out of it, which is pretty wild. So I kind of cheated because I just drove all the way down here. It took me about an hour to get down here. So I'm a little bit more experienced at these corners <laughs> since I've been driving them for about an hour. So I feel a little bit more confident going around these corners. But a lot of people just kind of hang out. People just pull over and park. There's a lot of bicycles. It's really scenic through here. There was actually a little park. I think I might have passed it. One of these days I want to go to that little park too. These corners, yeah, they can really sneak up on you. And look at this. This is pretty amazing going through trees. You actually don't see any trees like that here in Colorado where they actually hang over the highway like you'd see in some other states. And the tricky thing is, is trying to figure out how sharp the corner is going to be while you're going around the corner like this one. It's like the never ending corner. You don't know how sharp it's going to be or if it's going to change halfway through the corner. And then on these, you just want to open it up right through here. But you don't want to go too fast. It's a pretty awesome drive. I got a bike right on my tail. It looks like a Harley Davidson. Can't quite tell what kind of it is back there though. And I'm actually surprised there's not more people cruising around here because it's a Friday on a weekend. And it's a beautiful day to ride and I would think this that would be like packed with bikes and and cars and everything and it seems like there's not many people on this road which is pretty wild but yeah it's a fun little drive Especially once you get used to the, the corners and just the, the overhang of the trees, everything's so green. Oh, and it's so beautiful today. It's like, it's probably about 75 degrees. It's like the ideal temperature. And then you see the signs, 20 miles an hour. Usually that means you should go 20 on the corners. Usually those signs are pretty accurate when it comes to these mountain roads. And what I want to do is I want to take it all the way up to where I turn off to my on the highway for my house, so that's pretty far up the road. Fifteen. So this 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 right here, you really have to watch because this is like you could almost on uh, some of these roads. Some of these curves, you can almost like go down into first gear <laughs> and you know, do like the slow speed turn where you're like not leaning with the curve. You're like kind of counters, I guess counter leaning like right here. Take the thing, look at this. This is like almost, <laughs> almost like a first gear curve right there. That is like some technical stuff right there. Especially for me, I've only been driving like two months. This is like pretty advanced for me. <laughs> not really used to this technical stuff in the mountains here it's pretty funny you take a few curves and you think you're pretty good and then you get into something like this man I 
love the sound of this bike. It just roars. I'm sure all the all the neighbors up here hate it. <laughs> They're very like, what kind of a bike is coming through now? <laughs> This thing you can probably hear it for a quarter of a mile away. Like I actually have the the short shot exhausts on here. And at first when I first got this bike, so this one, look at this one. This one's super super curvy. Yeah, this this will definitely challenge you. Let me tell you, if you can get it down. And it seems like the more you drive it, the more fun it becomes. You start zooming around those corners. But they could definitely surprise you. Some of those corners coming up real fast. Ooh, look at that. Is that a free washing machine? Ooh, free propane dryer. Wow. <laughs> that looked pretty fancy too. This is beautiful. So I actually had to come on the highway. The highway, for me, the highway is not fun. This is what the fun is right here. Coming through all these twisties. Just enjoying the breeze and the cool air. That biker's still on my butt. I'd rather not have anyone on behind me. <laughs> And then when you get on like stretches like this where it's kind of open, you always tend to go a little bit faster. I really don't want to get out of third gear though. So yeah, it's just the beginning of summer up here in the mountains of Colorado. And it's been really hot the last few days, like super, super hot. Which is like, you know, up in the mountains, it's like 83 degrees, <laughs> which is like a record heat wave in the mountains of Colorado. Usually the highs in the summer are about 75 degrees. And it's almost always good riding weather. But you gotta kind of catch it at the right time. So pretty much I found the best time to ride if you're, you know, like working from home like I am. The best time to ride in the mountains of Colorado is about one o'clock one to two sometimes you can go one to three but usually at two to three the clouds usually start coming in and then you'll get a, a lot of rain clouds and stuff like that coming over and then usually it rains from three to four and then you could especially in the summer you can still you know from you know like five six seven you can still ride after the rains come and go and it's pretty predictable it's, it's almost like on a regular schedule Look at this, the, it's not even irrigated or anything over here in these fields. It's pretty wild and you could just, I wish I had this field right here for my cows. I could just run my cows right in that field, which is pretty amazing. So this is the Deer Creek Valley Road over here and this eventually, uh, let's see, this is, uh, I should have looked up the street sign. I tried to, but uh, I didn't want to go flying off the road. Uh, that's one of the things when I first started riding motorcycles, you know, uh, you know, I've only been riding for two months, so a lot of times you have these habits that, uh, especially new riders, they say, you know, whatever you look at, you tend to go in the direction of what you're looking at. So you always want to look where you want to go. But the problem is you get to the point after you get more experience, where you want to look at things where you don't want to go. <laughs> you, don't want to, you want to look at the scenery and the stuff on the sides of the road and kind of see what's going on. So that, that's what, like one of the things I'm working on is trying to look somewhere and then not go in that direction. So this is the end of South Deer Creek Canyon Road. So that is what it's called right here. So we turn left here to get to my house, up in the mountains, up in the middle of nowhere. And on this road, we don't have as many twisties that are as intense. It's still pretty curvy, really beautiful still. 
This is South Turkey Creek Road. Beautiful road for a beautiful Friday. Friday afternoon. It's about. Uh, I actually don't have the time on my little app there. This is, this is my phone right here. <laughs> it shows the best I'm going. Yeah, but it doesn't have the time in there. I kind of wish it did have the time. I'd say it's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Pretty much the perfect time to drive. Actually, I have a motorcycle behind me. Again. Which is pretty funny. Yeah, I think a lot of people go faster than the speed limit on these straightaways, even though it's... Uh, 30. <laughs> I'm going 40 and the guy's gaining on me. Yeah. So here's another little twisty. 15 miles an hour. You definitely have to keep an eye on those signs right there. This is pretty awesome through here. Of course, on these twisties, it's not quite as bad as the other ones. Doesn't seem like. Well, we'll see on this one. This one looks pretty sharp right here. If you can get them down if you knew this road if you drove it every day i think it would be really fun because you know where you could speed up where you could slow down all the hazards and everything and that's when it would get really fun versus always coming around a corner and kind of guessing what you think the corner is going to be like although the signs do help so that one said 20 miles an hour and <laughs> we're at we're going around at what uh 27 29 so you can exceed them a little bit. Look at this little place tucked in here, right up next to the road. That's kind of cute. The only thing about living up here where you have uh, like the houses tucked right in the sides of the mountain is if you, have, if you actually look at their backyards, uh, it's really super steep and most of the land is unusable. So I've actually seen people will buy like, you know, 50 acres and then their house is like on one little tiny quarter acre cut away in the mountain <laughs> and the rest of it. A lot of times these people can't even walk on their, uh, on their property because it's so steep. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out the gears, how fast to negotiate these corners. I've only ever been down here once on my motorcycle. I came down here um, with my car once, which is pretty cool. Yeah, this is really a blast all the way through here. And this actually comes out on Highway 285. Look at that, two arrows, 15. And I'm thinking it's a pretty sharp corner. <laughs> 15. All right, we're going to downshift for this one. 15. Uh, 22. <laughs> I've actually seen like uh, out east. I used to live in New Hampshire. And let me tell you, those signs out there, when it said 15, it meant 15. You couldn't go 20. <laughs> you had to slow down to 15. Those signs were really super accurate. Out here, it looks like there's a little leeway as far as uh, the speed you can negotiate these corners at versus the recommended speed. And the funny thing is, is where we started, we started way down at a lower elevation. So coming up this way, it gets colder and colder the further up the mountain you go. So potentially it could be like 10 degrees warmer down there. So I was, I was looking up the temperatures down there. It looked like it was supposed to be about 84 down at the bottom where I started down there. And then up here, I think the high was supposed to be 72. So there's quite a bit of difference between the, the lows and the highs. But the roads aren't too bad. A little bit of road damage, but Looks like they're kind of staying on top of it with the, you know, kind of they're repairing it with the, the snake oil, I guess you call it. Like the, the black tar where they repair the, the cracks. 
not many people driving up here, which is pretty surprising. I've been on some really nice motorcycle rides uh, on some roads coming down the hill. It's like everybody knows the road and there's just so many bikes. There's like hundreds and hundreds of motorcycles driving on the on the roads because everybody knows about them. Of course, if I post this on YouTube, oh, I drove right through the sand. <laughs> that kind of freaked me out. I should have went around that. I need to pay attention on what's in the road. So yeah, if I post this on YouTube, everybody will go like, man, that's an awesome road. I want to take my bike on it. <laughs> There'll be like a million people driving on this road. It's so awesome though. Probably one of the best twisty roads that, you know, sometimes you'll start on a road and it'll, the road, you know, condition turns really bad. But in this one, it has a lot of variety. So you'll go through a really sharp twist and then it'll open up and then you go through a lot of like overhanging trees and then it'll open up again. That's why you have these big open areas like this. It's really a varied road, really beautiful and changing the whole way. And 35 is a good speed, especially through a lot of these twisties. All right, so this is it. This is the end of the road. So this is 285 up here. Oh. I can't go that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull over in this parking lot over here. Holy cow, look at that big old dip. All right, so there you have it. That is one of the best rides in Colorado that I have ever seen. So uh, hey, thanks for coming along. That was that was fun. Uh, actually, I had to hook up my extra battery pack to my Osmo Action camera because I was afraid I was going to run out of battery. I drove all the way down there. So from here, my house is about 25 minutes away. Uh, probably about 15 minutes, 15 minutes on the highway, driving back to where I turn off to my house, and then the rest of it is kind of back roads. But yeah, look at how beautiful this is. Wide open country over here. Pretty awesome. So this is actually where a lot of people go sledding in the winter. You'll actually come by here in the winter and a lot of people have their sleds and they're sledding down that hill. That's probably the number one spot for sledding here in pretty much my whole neighborhood that I've seen up here in Colorado. It's pretty awesome. And I always see this and I was like, man, I wish I could ride my, you know, run my cows through here and eat all this grass. Thanks to bring a tractor through here and mow it all, which is pretty wild. All right, guys, this is my setup. If you're wondering what I look like, I have my Stars and Stripes helmet and my action camera. So, see you later, guys.